What's going on Legionnaires and welcome back to Comic Breakdown. If you're new to the channel, do me a favor and hit that sub button, hit the notification bell and make sure you're not missing any of the awesome content we have coming out. Now for this video, we're going to be jumping into something new. We're going to be jumping into Heroes Reborn issue number one. Now this is written by Jason Aaron, art is by Ed McGinnis, and this is a really, a really unique story because this is showing us a world without Avengers where Tony Stark never built an Iron Man armor, where Thor never picked up his hammer, where Wakanda was dismissed as nothing more than myth, nothing more than legend, and Captain America had never been found in the ice. And instead of having the Avengers, we have the Squadron Supreme of America. But for some reason, the Daywalker known as Blade is the one man alive who seems to remember the entire world somehow being reborn. Now be sure to check into my channel a little bit later on today because we're going to be covering some Rotters, we're going to have some Hellions, and we're going to be covering Scott Snyder's Noctera. And with that being said, let's dive into this breakdown. Alright guys, so issue number one, it picks us up in East LA. Now two weeks ago, Blade, he woke up covered in dry blood in a kind of flop house in London. Now he had no recollection of how he actually got there. No memory of the squalor that he appears to be of living in for months now. And as we're getting this narration, we see Robbie Reyes riding a bike down the street. And we're seeing Robbie because the first thing Blade tried to do was try to phone Avengers Mountain. Try to get a teleport there, but no one was there. He ended up investigating and finding out that the Avengers Mountain never existed. Or at least it's not existing here. And so he's been slowly hunting down every Avenger he may know to try to find somebody that remembers. Somebody that remembers the Avengers and try to figure out how this world has changed and why. And as he talks to Reyes, he asks him, he, you know, he tells him, I'm looking for Ghost Rider. And Reyes tells him, you know, like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I don't know who that is. I don't know what that is. I don't know what drug you're trying to peddle to me, but get some treatment, dude, because I have no idea what you're on about. And so Blade, you know, he's, he's kind of feeling like he's going crazy. You know, he's either the last Avenger on Earth or he's gone completely insane. Because two weeks ago, he woke up in a world where no one ever heard of the Avengers, where it's like they never existed. And because of this, he's been sticking to the shadows, searching for someone that can convince him he's not crazy. But he hasn't found that person yet. He feels like the world, the whole world's gone under the knife, being carved up and replaced by something completely different. Now, this is when we're taken to Washington, D.C. days later, and we see none other than freaking Doctor Doom. So it doesn't appear that all of the villains and, and heroes are gone. We still have individuals like Dr. Doom. Now, Dr. Doom, he's here at Washington, D.C. because he's here to invade. He's here to take over, and he's come with an army. An army of one. And he lets them know that his homeland, it was taken. And so now he's going to take this one. And this is where he reveals that he has the Crimson Gem. He took it from the Hidden Temple, took it from the God of Rage and Unstoppability, which now makes him Dr. Juggernaut. And we see Dr. Juggernaut just plow through everybody. He is laying waste. You know, and Blade really thinks about it. And the world, you know, while the Avengers aren't here, it's not that drastically different. Generations of men still wallow in ignorance. Rivers of blood still get spilled every day for no good reason. There are still TV preachers, there are still crooked politicians, but there is something else that this world has reborn. Because even without the Avengers, Earth still had its heroes. Earth still had some kind of defenders, and that is when we see the arrival of Hyperion coming in and bashing Dr. Juggernaut right in the face. And we see these two titans go head to head. And Hyperion, he is just beating the crap out of Dr. Juggernaut. Now, Dr. Juggernaut, he's mad. He's mad because Hyperion and the rest of the squadron, they made, they made it sure that his country had fair elections. So Dr. Doom, he couldn't rig them. He couldn't make himself the, the consistent ruler over and over again, trying to claim that it's free and fair elections. And so that's why he came here today. That's why he's trying to invade America 
because he feels like he was slighted by the squadron. And as these two battle, Hyperion tries to grab the gem, tries to take it from his chest, but Dr. Juggernaut stops him, grabs him around the neck, and we see Hyperion, he, he flexes his neck muscles so strong that it literally breaks Dr. Juggernaut's hand, shatters it, and we see, we see Hyperion just blast him with energy. But this is not the only hero. This is not the only person to be able to, to help Earth out. And this is where we see the arrival of Nighthawk. Because Doctor Doom, he didn't come by himself. He brought the rest of the Masters of Doom with him. And so the squadron has had to split up and try to take on all of these individuals one by one. And this is where we see Nighthawk drop into the Capitol building, only to see a very interesting villain. We see Venom, but he's going by the name of Black Skull. So on this Earth, we're seeing a lot of different things. We're seeing so many different changes, and Blade is trying to figure out what the heck is going on. He's tried to go find Stephen Strange, only to find that there's nobody there. Nobody remembers or knows who Stephen Strange is. You know, Jennifer Walters, nobody knows who that is. At least in the terms of Avengers. She is a notable and successful lawyer in having a law practice in LA. And with all of these changes, we're introduced to another hero. We're introduced to Dr. Spectrum. Now, Dr. Spectrum, he, he's getting some kind of notification, something coming from deep space. And so he is on his way to intercept, to intercept whatever this may be. And as he's making his way to intercept, he ends up blasting past Carol Danvers. Carol Danvers, who is not Captain Marvel, who's just a fighter pilot, who's never made it to the rank of captain. And as all of this is transpiring, down on the ground, Tony Stark is watching all of this, but he's not Iron Man, he's just a businessman. So there is just so much wrong with what's going on in this world. You know, Bruce Banner, the first time he hulked out, he was thrown into another dimension, the prison dimension, to kind of keep him locked away. Locked him away in the prison of the negative zone, never to be heard from again. This is kind of where they throw everything that they can't deal with, but they don't want to be a threat anymore. And so Blade, he's under the, under the assumption right now that somebody did this. Somebody is behind all of this. And he believes it's all affected by one event. And this is when he stands in front of the memorial of Captain America. And he believes that that one event that was changed, that one extremely important event that was changed, was Captain America, he was presumed dead. He was never found. And everything that followed after that led them to what, what is now present day. Present day where we have things going on like the Scarlet Witch never being rehabilitated. You know, Quicksilver never became what he was. And instead, Quicksilver, he was actually killed. He was killed during a battle with the Squadron. And Scarlet Witch, her chaos magic allowed her to absorb his powers. And in doing so, she became the Silver Witch. And now she vows vengeance against all of the Squadron. And we see a speedster fight between her and Blur. And she is doing her best to try to keep up with him, but he seems to be faster. You know, the Masters of Doom, they're made up of the greatest villains the world has ever known. Like the sworn enemy of Power Princess. The final Allfather, destroyer of Asgard, the unstoppable Allgog. The Masters of Doom are absolutely nothing to mess with. These guys are the top of the top. And you know, in other words, all the gods, they're dead. But why would the world, why would they need gods when it's got heroes like the Squadron Supreme? And we see Spectrum right above Earth, and he has something coming in on him. He has five different colored fists starting to hit him all at once. And Spectrum realizes exactly who this is. And, and he's in disbelief. He can't believe it. You know, this person is supposed to be dead. He, he saw them die. And the stones turned to dust. But this is when we see Thanos holding the Infinity Gauntlet. And so we're seeing that all the heavy hitters, they are here. Villain or good guy, everybody has a fight cut out for them. Now this is where we're taken to some days earlier in Norway. And Blade, he has found Thor. And he goes up to him to have a conversation. And he tells him, you know, you've... You brought me to this bar once. You told me a story about your father. How he sent you to Earth and made you human. 
gave you a little bit of humility, and he learned his lesson, and in doing so, he found his hammer as well, making him his godly self again. But the only issue is, he never found his hammer. He never found Mjolnir. And Odin? Odin is now dead. And Thor? He is nothing more than a drunk sitting in a bar. Now Blade, he tries. He, he really does try to talk Thor into helping him. To helping Thor find his hammer and be able to figure out what happened to this world. But Thor isn't having it. He doesn't want to hear it. He wants to sit here. He wants to sit in self-pity and self-wallow and drink his sorrows away. Now Blade, he just can't figure out why he's the only one that remembers. And so he goes to the only person that he really believes can give him answers. This is where he goes to Nighthawk. Now Nighthawk, he's in the middle of battling the, the Black Skull's minions here. And Blade comes in and just starts wrecking havoc on him as well. And he lets Nighthawk know, like, I've heard that you're the smartest man in the world. And if that's true, then who am I and why am I here? And Nighthawk, he's just like, you know what? Stay out of this, Blade. Like, go back to London, eat your rats and magpie. He's like, of course I know who you are. I know every two-bit cutthroat in every corner of the globe. He lets them know, like, he is the face in the dark when their fear won't let them sleep. Until the night that he is standing over them. And he asks Blade, like, is that this night for you, Daywalker? Is this the night that I stand over you? And Blade lets him know, like, look here, dude. Like, you people can change whatever it is around you all you want. But I'm telling you right now, there is no world where you can lay a hand on me without losing it. And Nighthawk, he's, he's just like, man, listen. Like, I, I don't have time to fight you right now. I'm trying to save the world. And Blade, he's like, you know, come, come to think of it, I'm actually doing the same thing too. You know, because right now he's been searching. Searching the whole globe for some kind of proof that he's not insane. And he just got exactly what he needed. He needed to see in somebody's eyes. Somebody else who knows this world is one giant lie. And now he's got it. Because Nighthawk gave him that. And as all of the, the Squadron Supreme, they battle around the globe. Nighthawk, Nighthawk he puts out a, a kind of memo. Saying to enhance all global surveillance. Because right now his primary target is Blade. Even though they have all of this ridiculous stuff going on, Blade just left an impression and Nighthawk's gonna want to fight back. Now, after Blade took off from there, he went searching. He had to break into the Pentagon and steal the last known coordinates. And from there, he let his vampire nose guide him by the smell of human blood. Because no matter how cold it is, even if it was from 1945, he would be able to smell it. And Blade makes his way down into this ice cavern because in 1945 the greatest hero in the world he disappeared he was lost and he was presumed dead even though he wasn't there were just never any avengers around to find him technically there still there really isn't but there is blade and blade he doesn't give up even if the whole damn world's against him he's going to complete his mission and this is where we see him find Captain America, and at the same time, Mjolnir appears in front of Thor. And Blade mummers to himself, Avengers assemble. And that will be the end of this issue. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Personally, I, I think this was a ton of fun. They really, Marvel has really been focusing on Blade a lot lately, which I'm thrilled about. You know, maybe we're going to get some more Blade movies. Who knows? That would be absolutely phenomenal. Blade TV series, even even better. But I've been thoroughly happy with everything that the, they've been doing in this line so far. This issue number one was a great introduction into this world. Using Blade, I think, is absolutely phenomenal. And, and seeing Squadron Supreme, that is just absolutely beautiful. And Spectrum versus Thanos, like, these are awesome. I absolutely love it. I'm really excited about this line, so we're going to definitely continue to cover this, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, make sure you've hit that notification bell, tell me what you think of this issue down in the comments, and until the next video.